My dear sister Josina, thank you so much for being with us tonight and for the words that you shared with us. Um, this is a very extraordinary moment to have you and your son among us. If the life of one man could encapsulate and dramatize the African quest for independence and self-determination, that man would be Samora Moises Machel. And if freedom was a dream to be clung to, never to be let go of, if freedom was a dream that has to be fulfilled in a lifetime, the dreamer of such a compelling dream would be none other than the grandson of Malengan, the soldier who fought valiantly alongside Ngungunyani against the Portuguese colonialists, up to the bitter war of 1895. If ever there was a man on whose shoulders rested the hopes of the peoples of Mozambique, Zimbabwe and South Africa all at once, that man was Samora Machel. In him was combined the qualities of a soldier, the attributes of a military tactician, the rigor of a political theorist, and the wisdom and psychological acumen of one who understood what it takes to invent a nation out of a disparate people who had long been harassed, terrorized, derided, and destabilized. Much has been made of the African philosopher president, perhaps too much. Samora Machel was none of that. He was a military general, intimately involved in the Mozambican War of Resistance a war that straddles 1964 to 1974-1975. I want to suggest that the motive force behind Samora's struggle against colonialism was not complicated. It was actually his love for fellow Africans. Accordingly, his astute political acumen enabled him not only to lead Mozambique to independence, but also enabled Mozambique under his leadership to be a catalyst of the liberation of both Zimbabwe and South Africa. And so, on Wednesday, the 25th of June, 1975, a voice was heard in a thousand transistor radios. In those days, transistor radios were a luxury item. They were sparsely distributed in far-flung villages across southern Africa, from Madagascar to Tanzania. On that day, 25 June 1975, people had the familiar, confident, militant voice of Samora Machel, unmistakable, as he proclaimed, Eu Samora Moisés Machel, juro de la minha honra de militante da Frelimo, dedicar todos minhas zirmegia à defesa, promoção e consolidação das conquistas de revolução o bestar de povo moçambicano. <laughs> On 25 June 1975, as we huddled around the transistor radio at house number 445 in zone 8, Midlands, Samora spoke in a language we did not know, but we understood the meaning behind his words. We understood the meaning of the moment the momentousness 
of the moment. So from Langa through Soweto all the way to Kamihinga, people huddled around their transistor radios like porcupines seeking warmth from one another in winter. But it was winter in several other ways. For in Namibia, in Rhodesia, in South Africa, it was not yet Uhuru. But the sun was rising in the east and Mozambique was rising with it. Samora was hugely influential inside the country of South Africa. In our mind's eye, we could see on 25 June 1975, the people of Mozambique singing in the streets and dancing. We could see their colorful apparels vividly shining in the sun. In our imagination, we could see them loosening their chains of colonialism, untying the shackles of oppression. With our own ears, we heard the voice of Samora Marshall declare the end of colonial rule. We heard him announce the beginning of independence. Those of us who had been discouraged by the parcel bomb that killed Abraham Onkoputse Tiro in Botswana in 1974, 25 June 1975 was a massive reassurance that Tiro did not die in vain. Indeed, several formations in South Africa were excited by the declaration of Mozambican independence as the members of the fledgling Black People's Convention and the South African Student Organization, SASO, decided at that time to launch a series of Frelimo rallies. Jimmy Kruger, that infamous man, banned all of them immediately. But they went ahead all the same. They went ahead in Deben, they went ahead in Teflo. And as a result of those Viva Frelimo rallies, several youngsters in inverted commas were arrested, including one Sats Cooper, Muntu Mieza, Musiwa Likota, Obri Mugwabe, Nkwe Nkwe Nkomo, Pandela Nine Forowodwe, Zitule Letrindi, Strinimudli, Gabriel Sidibe, and if I'm not mistaken, one Cyril Ramaphosa was also arrested shortly after the Viva Freddy Morales. Only a few of Samora South African children, children born out of his inspiration, born out of his leadership. So, my dear sister, you have no idea what your agreement to briefly engage with us means to us today. We meet in the context of remembering the tragic events of the assassination of Samora on South African soil on the 19th of October, 1986. In our hearts and in our lives, Samora continues to live. Indeed, one of the children of Samora Machel, of whom I was speaking a moment ago, is the president of South Africa today. Let me say to you, my sister, that it seems to me that your destiny may have been set and sealed in the militant blood that flows in your veins. The blood of your great-grandfather, Malengane. The blood of your grandfather, Mandande, Moses. Your grandmother, Guguye, Tema, Zimba. Your dad, Samora, and your beloved mom, Mama Grasha. And of course, the person after whom you have been named, your Maninkulu, Josina militant and powerful personalities, all of them. We are politically free today, yet there are so many ways and so many areas where we are so far from Uhuru. We need your leadership. We recognize the many ways in which in your own personal life you have taken on the mantle of struggle from your parents as a woman and as an African. We value your leadership. We need your leadership. Obrigado.